Welcome to Kame House Party. I'm Aaron. And I'm Vince. It is the only improv comedy Dragon Ball podcast in the known universe where we try to cover every episode and iteration of Dragon Ball. And then we come together on microphones to talk about it in a fun and comedic manner. Uh, like I said, there's improv comedy sometimes. Uh, there's bits. Uh, we just, we're just having a, we're just trying to have a good time. Right? Yeah. This is a good time, fun time, podcast time. But before that, we have to get, look, let's get serious here. You can't just have a party willy-nilly. We've all tried and we've all failed. <laughs> we think a party just happens? No, there's prep. And part of our prep for our podcast is this little something we call Kame Housekeeping. We get you, the audience, ready to enjoy the podcast proper uh, with a few bits of information and segments. And the first order of business for Kame Housekeeping is the world-famous One Minute Roundup. I heard you were in need of a hired gun. Yes, um, you see, there's been several men stealing all my sheep. And I need you to go out to the field, and when they show up, will you... Bang, bang, pop them. Does that sound agreeable? Almost. Just need to know the fee. Well, I have not a lot. Look, I'll be honest. I don't have a ton of money. Um, or any money. Uh, but I can't, but I have, I still have several sheep. Uh, would you like a sheep for this job? So am I, am I hearing this right? Are you offering up your sheep? For my pleasure, in uh, in in response for me protecting said sheep, you're just gonna hand me over a sheep to do whatever I want with. I mean, you could shear it for wool. I uh, you could eat it. Uh, Maybe. I'm, yeah. Once the once the job is done, I will give you a sheep. You will you will leave my property. And then once you are off of my property, whatever you do with that sheep is your business. Uh, a business, and I respect your privacy, by the way. I don't need to know what you do with the sheep. All right, well. But you do get a sheep. I'm just, I just want to make sure that I'm not protecting these sheep to, you know, be, you know, mishandled by someone. You know, someone, someone like you, maybe. Seems, seems like you're okay with somebody, you know. Enacting a carnal sin on a sheep. As long as it's not on your premises. I don't know if you're trustworthy. I'm a hired gun. Wait, and I've, I'm not sure. I've, I've, I've killed many a people. But you, you, you just gave me the green light to do oh, a both sheep. Both pistols are out. Yeah, both pistols are out. Ugh. I have, look, I'm, ugh, I'm pulling out my old timey collar because this is making me very nervous. You're the one that brought up the fornication with, with said animal. Huh, you said fornication. Click, click, the hem is uh, back. Wait a minute. How am I the bad guy here? I don't know, sheep fucker. No, I've never done such a thing. You, I... I merely I, posed the question. I'm a I hired... was being polite. Of course I don't want you to do that to the sheep. Okay. But it's your sheep. All right. And every man's free. Every man's free to do whatever they want with whatever they want. Correct. <sighs> I see now this feels like this feels like very much a trap. You want me to s agree with that statement? I'm which, cocking the hammers back even more. <laughs> I am I'm a man of principles, the libertarian principle, and yes, every man is free to do whatever they want on their own property. <laughs> You've got yourself a deal. Uh, I'll send wait. you the pictures when I'm done fucking your shit. <laughs> And scene. Scene. Wow, we got a whole scene out of that. Uh, yeah, a full scene, start, middle, and yeah. end. 
which means it might not have been that funny <laughs> if we weren't laughing. Which, by the way, we, we start the one minute roundup with an improvised Western scene to loosen our improv muscles or tighten them, depending on what we need for the day. And when one of us breaks, that's when we end the scene and move on to the one minute roundup proper, which is where one of us, this time Vince, has to summarize everything every inch and iota of Dragon Ball that we've covered so far in the podcast in under a minute. Now, for you new listeners, that is 150 plus episodes of Dragon Ball. That's a lot to cover, and Vince is ready for that challenge. And we take up this task for you, the old listener and the new listener. So you don't have to go back and listen to all of our old episodes. You can start right here where the audio quality is good <laughs> and the comedy is about the same. Um, you don't have to go back and watch all of Dragon Ball. You can just pop right in. It's ad hoc is how I think I'm using that term correctly. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vince, are you ready to entertain and inform the people? Let's get ready to round up! Copyright strike? Oh, no. No, no. All right, here it is. Hurry up. All right, here we go. Before we get copyright stricken in three, two, one. So Dragon Ball is about this little boy, Goku, who lands on planet Earth. Turns out he's an alien. We find out out recently. But in the beginning, he was just a kid. He was running around looking for Dragon Balls with his friends. Bulma, Yamcha, Puar, Oolong. Master Roshi Krillin, uh, then Goku fights in three Tenkaichi tournaments. He comes in second two times out of the three. He loses to his master in disguise who blows up the moon. He loses to Tien Shinhan, who's a really strong guy who has four arms. And then he loses, uh, and then he wins against uh, Piccolo Jr., uh, son of his nemesis Piccolo, who killed Krillin. Uh, uh, by the hand of his friend Tambourine. Then Goku, along the way, he stopped the Red Ruin Army from taking over the world. He stopped Emperor Pilaf from taking over the world. He he fought his dead grandfather. Then he met his grandfather uh, after his after he became an adult to get the the, the uh the, he got married. Uh, then he had a kid. Uh, now we're in Z, and he had a kid. Then Goku fought his uh, brother from another planet. Uh, Raditz, who wanted Goku to work on the Saiyan Enterprise, and now they're waiting for two more Saiyans to come, Vegeta and Nappa, and Gohan's training more! Oh, hey! <sighs> yeah, you got it! Oh, man. It's starting to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is, <laughs> brain is overheating. Well, take a second to cool off, because you've earned it. Well, I explained to the folks that the next part of Kame Housekeeping is where we inform you that Vince and I, we watched two different versions of the show. I watch the English subtitled version. Vince watches the English dub version. And we do this because we messed up on our first episode. We did not coordinate which version we would watch. But that's all right. A mistake turned into a masterpiece because now we get to compare and contrast the two different versions and it's fun to do. I like it. We kept doing it. Vince, yeah. I assume Vince likes it. I love it. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, a little early for love, but yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's only been how many years of doing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, take thing, I, t uh, I take things slow. I didn't say we were married to this process either. Anytime this could change. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, I'm seeing other ways of doing the podcast. <laughs> That's cool, right? I mean, I haven't deleted my uh, podcast format Tinder yet. Mm -hmm. So I think we're fine. I haven't been like active on it, but you know, sometimes people are like, hey, why don't you why don't you just make the whole show a bunch of different segments? And I'm like, that could be fun. Somebody said, Hey, 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 hot stuff. <laughs> Want a soundboard? <laughs> then I just heard fur, 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 fur legitimately i hope someone messages us and says hey hot stuff <laughs> what a soundboard because i would say yes i'd say yes to that and so yeah little little differences that may or may not change in the future um and the first difference is usually the title uh vince please give us your title first and the title for dragon ball z episode 16 plight of the children Yes, certainly. Yep. Um, mine's. Oh, I can't uh, we'll wait. We'll see. We'll see. We'll I can't see. Wait. Hey, it's a title. I can't wait. <laughs> so the title for episode sixteen of Dragon Ball Z uh, in the English subtitled version is "Run, Gohan, Longing for Mount Paozu, 
where Chi Chi is waiting. My goodness. I I am just so astonished by that title. Because it's kind of nothing. It's the most nothing. <laughs> it's less than what I thought mine was. Mine has some like, ah, it was written by someone who once read a Dickens novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is very Dickensian. Yeah, plight of the children, my dear boy. Think of them in this hour of need. Chapter 16, Plight of the Children. Pip <laughs> did trade with Piccolo. So he could marry Miss ha- that lady, that that chick that Miss Havishan was trading to break his heart. Great expectations is weird, isn't it? I say I do say so myself. And at that at, and just in that in nick of time, his father Goku had been running atop the long walkway of Snake. I don't know. I don't know that stuff. We don't. <laughs> yeah, we. this is not a smart person podcast. Yeah, we don't have, we, we're not describing past historical events and giving them all a British hue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, if nothing else, I believe this is the first time we get a name for where Goku is living. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. I, I, I think you are correct. P-A-O-Z-U spells... Paozu. Mount Paozu? Yeah. Paozu. 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 So, someone will correct us. And look, I don't know if you look at the property values on Zillow for that area. I mean, nice work, Goku. He mm-hmm. got in before the market shot up. He's sitting on a gold mine. Property gold mine. I mean, he might literally be sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> Could be. Um, but we, we can't worry about that because we have to worry about... Gohan. Again, this is a very Gohan episode. Mm -hmm. When we last left off, Gohan was training, but he was also getting sucked up during a tsunami into a water spout. Uh, It's, I assume the next day, it is morning, uh, and he's just washed up on a beach, and this boy and this girl, who seem to be related, uh, are sort of poking at him. Uh, The boy comments that, yep, Gohan is dead. Uh, The little girl asks how he knows, and then the boy teases his sister for not knowing how to check if a body is dead. (laughs) There's like a couple of things that the boy makes fun of the girl for not knowing how to do. I'm assuming they're all the same age as Gohan, which is like four or five or six, and none of them should should know any of this at this current age. I have a feeling that your, uh, your dialogue... It, in throughout this episode is going to be a lot more mature than mine. No, probably not. <laughs> no, not in, not not in all senses, or not in in some of the things. This episode is wild, not in a in a Dragon Ball way, but in like a societal way. <laughs> yeah, and in like a what is going on, <laughs> yes. kind of way. And I feel like there has to be. So we're we're dealing with. So throughout this entire episode, I feel like we have to give this bit of a caveat at the top. The whole episode is about this group of orphans and sort of their fight with society. (laughs) A society that was broken two years ago by a massive tidal wave. Mm -hmm. A natural disaster ravaged the community. People are trying to pick up the pieces. And these kids are sort of left behind, but not really. Right. And Gohan is a fucking tourist we will get into it (laughs) how fucking privileged gohan is (laughs) but the i mean these kids supposedly have it tough because they're like oh time to loot the body oh there's nothing here but a sword and then gohan we find out is not dead right he wakes up he's like oh that's my sword and then plop passes out and like the next thing that we see is gohan waking up in like a little bit of a dilapidated house with a full grand piano in it I'm glad that survived. Yeah. <laughs> we lost everything in the tidal wave except our baby Gran. Our grandbaby. Yes, we are. We're sentient pianos. We, we were terrified of water damage, but thankfully we all survived. I kept all of my keys. There was water up to my clawed feet. The little petals on the bottom. I, I don't quite know what they do. I'm not a smart sentient piano, but uh, Gasp. they got they got rested. I'm you've, sorry. You've forgotten 
You've forgotten what you really are. A player mm. piano from 1932. Your pedals are designed to elongate, truncate, or muffle certain sounds. Uh, I just... I just start playing ragtime, and I don't know why. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Please, wheel yourself into our dilapidated home. <laughs> the humans Thank are you. all gone, and we've created a cars-like society. <laughs> Say, who's that, uh... Who's that saucy keyboard over there? Ah, the ele- <laughs> the Yamaha. Mm-hmm. She's new. Oh, and I see her, her sister Cassio. I hear they're only step siblings. <laughs> yes, pianos are very horny. <laughs> yeah, P.S. Pianos love to fuck. And, and seed. So now we know where baby grands come from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The improv team, Baby Grant. <laughs> uh, that's real inside baseball, baby. That's that's the most inside baseball. Mm. If you were if you were around the improv scene in New York in the, in, in the in, twenty teens, in the l- mid to late twenty teens, mid to late twenty teens. If you ha- if you know that reference and you're listening, please let us know at commonhousepartypod mm-hmm. at gmail dot com. But we'll we'll continue to move on because. Uh, while they're giving this exposition, there's a van approaching the area, kind of driving through the ruins of this old town, and they're full of goons. And then I was tickled pink to hear that the kids called them the goon squad when they arrived. Oh, that's so good. I wish I got that. Yeah, they're, I, I was literally, I was writing in my notes, like, look at these goons driving up. And then uh, the the... The two kids' names are Rom and Tico. Why did they change Chico to Tico? I don't know. Also, why Rom? <laughs> why not Rob? <laughs> <laughs> well, Rom's a very standard Western name, I think. Of course, of course. <laughs> the Space Knight Rom of, of Marvel Comics fame. Rom Emanuel. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I just know that name. Uh, just name him Rom and Com if you're going to be oh, my cutesy goodness. about it. Jeez. That should have been it. But it's Chico and yours, not Tico. Mm-hmm. All right. The long lost marks, brother. The the goon squad show up and Rom's like, ah, the goon squad is here. I, I chuckled. So in mine, they're just from the Institute. The Institute. Yeah, which is more, I mean, that's more menacing. Yeah. Rom and Tico are like yelling at Go- Gohan to run with them or they'll get caught. And they say, if the goons from the home catch kids, they get spanked and yelled at, and they get put in pens and treated like animals. They make wow. you do. They make you do chores. It's wow. awful. Wow. No. No. So the way that Rom describes the institute and what happens there, they say once a day they come and try to take us to the pokey. Which we'll unpack okay. in a second. But then he says, at the Institute, you get picked on, slapped with slippers, you can't come out, and they cut your nails every night. <laughs> oh, my God. What? <laughs> you get slapped with slippers. So I'm assuming this Institute is run by Latino moms with chancletas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. They, they make you cut your nails at night before bed. Yeah. How often? <laughs> like, are, are these what's, kids, do what's they not night? have nails? <laughs> they get the, they put the emery board to it. You get a full, this, this sounds just like a strict spa. <laughs> yeah, all it sounded like, it was like, well, this is an orphanage. And they're, you know, they're blowing it up mm-hmm. out of proportion of yeah. what, what happens. But what I, what, what blew me away besides your description of what happens <laughs> Is that they come once a day? Yeah, every day. Y'all can't capture some kids. No. And it's like, uh, uh, to describe the goon squad, there's one guy with one giant tooth. Mm-hmm. Like one one big buck tooth. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love this guy. He had the best, he had the best like character work. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, we'll, uh, we'll get to more of that character work in a second. But then there is... Um, there's this big hulking mustachioed man with a nightstick 
and a his Mar- a Mario, a, a, a Mario. We'll just call them Mario and Luigi for for lack of better yeah, characterizations, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the big mustachioed guy, then a slightly taller, heavy, like not heavy, but like built out guy, and then there is. I'm assuming like the the house mom and she seems like fine, but the other the other two the other three are just like monstrous men. <laughs> it's all wild. Everything is insane in this, except for like you said, the woman in glasses who just looks like a social worker. Mm-hmm. But like it's if this is an orphanage, which I assume it is, because look, folks, spoilers: we're never gonna find out. And we're never even gonna get a look. At the facility. No, 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 no. But I assume it's an orphanage. If it is, why is there a goon squad? Yeah. To round up children. Especially after a national, or a national disaster, but a natural disaster. Like. It should be all social workers. Yeah. Ugh. (laughs) It's very, it's very odd and very concerning. And after the goon squad show up, uh, they give chase to Go- Gohan, Rom, and Tico. Rom and Tico escape to a nearby tree via rope swing. Gohan seems to be captured, and then he jumps. And you know he's Gohan, so he can he can jump yeah. from a building to a tree very easily. To the surprise of Rom and Tico, uh, if you are in a tree, you are immune to the Goon Squad. Yes, <laughs> which again every day. Every day. You know, just, just chop them down. No trees. <laughs> yeah. Problem solved. Come at night, chop down their one tree that they use to, to look out. I'm not going to condone this, but I'm surprised that they aren't trying for like a night. Just come in the night, bust in FBI raid style, 6 a.m. Flashbang. They sh- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming in through the roof. <laughs> You're under arrest for being a child. You're under arrest for not having ki- for, for not having parents. Parent. <laughs> Which is a crime here. I guess that's it. I find it so incredibly hard to believe that these kids are wily enough yeah. to escape a daily assault <laughs> on their makeshift fortress. They uh so Gohan, Ram, and Tico are safe in their tree, but not every orphan got out. And this is where the Bucktooth the Bucktooth guy gets owned by this older kid mm-hmm. named Picaro. Mm, close. Piegero? P-I-E-G-E-R-O. Piegero? Piegero? Pay, yeah. Piegero? Piccaro? That just sounds like you're doing a horrible accent trying to say piccolo. And I wasn't sure if they did that, if they were setting you, uh, like setting us up for Gohan to learn a lesson from this guy, a la, <laughs> nope. a la piccolo style, like, or maybe even learning that piccolo can transform into a, a teenage kid. <laughs> the coolest teenage kid, the the Rufio of this group. Yeah, like truly, he's got the red headband. Nelly style bandage on his chin. <laughs> he he's faster. Th- he's faster than the speed of light. I mean, Yamcha wishes he was this cool. Exactly. Oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect description. Yeah, big Yamcha. Yamcha's cooler, younger brother, Picaro. Picaro. Your version of his name is easier to say, so I'm gonna go with that. So Picaro, like you said, he he beats up the goon squad. Gets everyone up in trees, saves one girl who looked like a Bulma. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the woman in glasses says, don't like, please come with us. We can give you new clothes and clean rooms and a hot meal. Please let us take care of you. You are children. And, I, and I'm pretty sure in mine to to that to that end, the kids say, we don't want any of that stuff. Like, you don't want a bed. <laughs> So I could see these kids having a distrust of authority. If they just went through a natural disaster? Yeah. 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 I mean, they're dealing with a lot of trauma. It's been definitely undiagnosed and untreated, right? They, yeah. they form their own community. They banded together with other children, mm-hmm. which pisses Bucktooth Guy off because he just gets... <laughs> And there's this shot of him. Every All the goons are staring up, but he's like kicking dirt like an upset dog. Yeah. 
He's so mad about all of this. <laughs> like a baseball manager at a bad call at a baseball <laughs> game. He's kicking dirt. Yeah, he's calling foul. You gotta be kidding me. These kids don't want food. They don't want a home. Now, Bucky, which is the nickname we all agreed on. It's the nickname I told you to call me, but damn it. Bucky, these, these kids are going through a lot, all right? Don't. Oh, you're throwing your hat on the ground. Yeah, I don't care how hard they've got it. I keep getting rocks thrown at me, and all I'm trying to do is help them out, give them a place to eat and sleep, and be healthy and happy, and they keep calling me a monster, a buck tooth monster. Well, that's, I know you're sensitive about your one tooth, and this will be the last time I mention it. But, but like, you do, you do, when you go to grab them, which I ask you not to do, I don't know why I bring you on this trip, Union rules, but... Union rules. Goon Squad Local, 506. I respect them. I go to all the rallies. Goon Ra! But I told you, don't grab them or approach them by saying, booga, 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 I'm going to put you in a pen, which is not what we do at the orphanage. But that's what my mom always used to say when, I, when it was time for me to, to get ready for dinner. She'd go... She'd, kick down the door into my room and say, booga, 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 time to eat and grab me <laughs> and drag my ass downstairs. That's, look, that's, your union provides, uh, you know, counseling, you know. <laughs> Counseling's for the week. Uh, next, when we come tomorrow, uh -huh. on, you know, day 563 of this continuous battle with seven children. <laughs> Maybe try, you, you, you ever heard the idea that, you know, the definition of insanity is to repeat the same action, but expect different results? You mean my motto? The goon union motto, yes. <laughs> yeah, can we maybe use nonviolent methods? I said, let's, hey, let's go by the Krispy Kreme. We'll bring you a bunch of donuts. And then I always eat them on the way. You do always eat them. I'm addicted. <laughs> I'm addicted to the cream. With the one tooth, it's really all you can eat. Soft foods. Mm -hmm. My dentist says it's fine. I've only got the one. <laughs> I talked to your dentist sometimes. He's like, what else, What other harm can he do? Why not? Is well, the way he describes it. Well, I forgot. I, you know, everybody knows I lost all my teeth in the tidal wave. Yeah, that, when you were on the news and you described it as a giant fist came out of the water. It, it was it, it looked and was shaped like my dad. <laughs> and scene. And scene. Uh, come on, goons. Oh, come on, goons. But yeah, th this whole this whole premise of this episode is like super wild. And it doesn't it doesn't slow down at all. No, there's so the, the goons give up, apparently, after getting pelted with rocks. They give up after a brief chase. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do find out there are animal kids, which I love. Mm hmm. A wolf kid and a... At first, I thought they were a bear kid, but I want to say they're a gopher kid. Gopher kid? Uh, in profile, they have a longer snout and some whiskers. Mm. So maybe. what I mean, what, what animal are they? I, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, I thought one was a, a fox and one was a dog. But I, I, I'm certain I'm wrong. I don't know. But it is nice to have some animal kid representation in this scenario where everyone is affected. Look, that mole dog kid was the only one getting into the apocalypse aesthetic. He had goggles and a and cap. The, yeah. yeah and the, <laughs> like he's f flying a World War I fighter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, love that kid. L I love those animal kids. And, and we do like it's not all it's not all bad because after they leave we we see all the kids and Gohan is I mean rolled into the fold like immediately immediately he's just having a good old time forgetting about his mission and then uh I <laughs> right before commercial it's just Gohan and Piccolo on the top of an old building just going woo arms up just ah! <laughs> they saw Garden State and like, that looks cool. Let's do it. Let's yell into the void. Ah, that movie. Garden State or the movie that we'll make about this specific episode? Uh, both. <laughs> Garden, I, I don't. 
I, all right, before we go to commercial, I'm going to tell a story about Guard State. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. So a lot of listeners know I was raised Mormon. Uh, I was a Mormon missionary. And when you're a Mormon missionary, you there is a limit to what media you can consume, uh, i.e. you can only listen to music that the church makes, or you can't watch movies or watch TV. That That's a for sure. So I remember coming back home. I was working at a movie theater at the time, and the boss there was like, oh, you haven't seen Garden State? Oh, we all got to watch Garden State. Everyone gathers at his place to watch Garden State. He's like, oh, it's a perfect movie. It's like, it's exactly what it's like being in your early 20s. <laughs> and I'm watching it, and I didn't know at this time what a Zach Braff was. Ah. Because again, no TV, mm-hmm. no, no Scrubs reference. So I'm sure if you were a fan of Scrubs and you saw Garden State, you're like, what is this? I didn't shit on it as much as I did do now mm. at the time, but I also wasn't blown away by the weird like idiosyncrasies of like, here's a movie about a bunch of weird shit for no reason. Not even weird shit. It's like, oh, this person is off. Isn't that funny? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, mm-hmm. Zach Braff. You want to maybe emote every once in a while? So I, I'm going to jump in with no knowledge of Garden State. I do know Zach Braff from Scrubs because Scrubs is by far my favorite TV show. Go Scrubs, then Lost. <laughs> it's season one of Westworld. <laughs> so what? I'm surprised you have not seen that. I'm surprised some, I'll say it, some white boy <laughs> hasn't dragged you in to say you got to watch Garden State. It'll change your life. Oh, well, because I was that kid or I was that guy in college that was grabbing all the white boys to be like, you, you haven't watched Scrubs? <laughs> <laughs> From, it was on NBC. Uh, I don't know. Uh. But you didn't know where that was going, and it went into a Scrubs reference, and then right into <laughs> commercial. Hey, you, that's right. Eating Chef Boy ID ravioli out of a can. You, you're a, you're a big dumb idiot, right? You've got fingerless gloves. You're always wearing a hat backwards. Uh huh. Uh, look, I bet I bet you you're right now on a cracked leather couch eating the aforementioned uh, pasta sauce thing, or a beefaroni. We or, accept that, or a beefaroni, maybe a hamburger helper. But you got your fingerless gloves on, leather brown, <laughs> tank top white stained. Mm-hmm. Wife or mother yelling at you. Wife, mother, significant other yelling at you, and you're still in your your uh, your cargo pants and jack boots from earlier. Look, you gotta, don't just lay around, you gotta make something out of yourself. That's right. And you can, by joining the Goon Squad. That's right. Goon Squad, a, a uh, regional organization providing goons like you and me with gainful employment and a sense of purpose. You wanna rough up some kids for no reason? <laughs> Join the Goon Squad. You like riding in the back of vans with no seats. Goon Squad. Do you want the camaraderie and, and, and fellowship of other fellow goons where you can discuss your favorite Springsteen song? Spoiler, they're all great. Spoiler, also double spoiler, Goon Squad twice. <laughs> jo- yeah, join up. What Look, the benefits alone. Dental. Bi-weekly barbecue. Lunch daily. Free pickup and transport from your, from your back alley or the side of your house. A per diem of two packs of smokes a day. A bandana you could choose to wear either on your head, arm, over your face, or around your neck. Deodorant not required. Hey, we're all sweaty. What are you gonna? What are you gonna do? About what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Uh, uh, try, try and gussy up. Why? Yeah, we have a locker room, but you don't have to use it. Mm-hmm. Oh, those showers are spotless. <laughs> I don't know why we got them. I'll tell you why. Because we want options for our goons. Because, I mean, that's a good point. Look, we got the showers because of our goon union. Uh Aha, aha. And oh, all of these benefits that we're doling out all come directly from the union. Minimal fees. We're here for your goon rights. That's right. And if you want to join the goon union, just call 1-800-GOO-GOO-GOON. Yeah, no dumb, no smarty pants website, no texting. You got to make an actual phone call like a man. Yeah, or take one of the numbers off of the many flyers on the buildings outside. Mm -hmm. 
probably outside the pool hall you're currently at. Exactly. Or on the outside of the bowling alley that you like to smoke mm-hmm. outside of. Anyway, we'll be here waiting. Yeah, we're always around. We're always you know, around. Yeah, you know, look, Larry, Jim, I know you're out there listening. Just fucking join already. Greg, Colin, Doug, we know you're out there. We know you're a good Simon <laughs> and Peter, come on. Mick, Johnny, Rocco, get in here. Anyway, should we end this? I don't know. What are we doing? We call it cut on this? Who calls Who's cut? Who's in charge of this thing? Would somebody call cut? God, I don't even know how to work one of these microphones. I think I got it. I think I got it. I'm just going to smash right. it. Here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there needs to be more goon jokes in modern media. <laughs> Hired goon. Hired goons. Yeah, in the, in, in the house, that was, a, that was an inside joke. We uh. would just say hired we would just questioningly say hired goons. <laughs> hired goons. <laughs> hired goons. Affordable. Yeah, we're scab goons. We'll cross uh, that picket uh, line. Goon mercs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Freelance goon. Uh, go- gooning in freelance now has got to be tough. I know. Could you imagine? You can't get any goon work out there. How do you rough up someone if you got to be six feet away? That's where That's where the most inventive goons come into their own. I got. I took a pool skimmer, <laughs> taped a bunch of <laughs> knives to it. It works pretty good, I think. I can also open bottles with it. Yep. <laughs> I lashed a bunch of pool cues together, and then on the end, I tied burnt cigarettes to them. <laughs> oh, you're using up all your cigarette per diem. Hey, it gets the job done, <laughs> and I've been and I've been security at this fairway for three weeks. Fair enough. None of the food's gotten the virus. I only cough from secondhand smoke. <laughs> but I normally go unfiltered. It's not a big deal. Oh, me? I went back to my college days, made some really heavy Frisbees <laughs> so I can accost people from a distance. I just get a, I just yell. <laughs> I yell profanities at people. That usually gets them to go where I, I yell at directions. I usually listen. Hey, is everybody able to hear us on this goon zoom? <laughs> Larry, your background cannot be what? Bud McKenzie but it and is. a bunch of Budweiser girls. But uh, but come on, this is where I want to be. This is where we all it's, should be. It's too, I agree. Look, I'd love to be down in Cancun with the missus, avoiding the missus. I think you meant to say your mistress. <laughs> but look, hey, this, hey, is a, hey oh. this is a business call, you know? Hey, sorry about that. Trying to keep it civil. But that's too distracting. Look at, look, half the goons on this call got the tongues out. <laughs> <laughs> we can't concentrate on goon business. <laughs> I'm salivating. <laughs> I haven't punched anybody in weeks. I know, look, we're, we're going to get to that. It's in the minutes. So I'm I am sure at this point, Aaron, we should be writing for SNL. <laughs> yeah, what about the what about the goons now? Who who will care for the plight of the goons? The plight of the goons. We'll change the uh, change the episode. Should we keep this nonsense in? Uh maybe keep it for some uh, if we need to use some unreleased footage or keep it in. Actually, fuck it, keep it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna audience, you're gonna hear this. Gonna, this is us coming back from a break. Just going off on goons. Go we, we had a goon run. We went goon crazy. Crazy for goons. <laughs> Mostly because I think both of us just realized, hey, we haven't said the word goon in so long. Goons, we love so fun. Goon. Such a fun term and a fun profession. <laughs> I'm so glad the American version brought this up. But look, we can't hired goons. <laughs> I showed Vin, you won't know about this, but I showed Vince a clip from The Simpsons about goons. <laughs> Never seen it. Uh, well, you, you, your Simpsons knowledge is... I got most of my Simpsons knowledge from pop culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is weird, because I got most of my pop culture from The Simpsons. Oh my goodness, a snake eating its Simpsons tail. The Ouroboros of comedy. But look, we can't, go, we can't goon it up forever. No. We have to get to Gohan, who is now part of this, you know, the Artful Dodgers gang. Uh, goes to a market, sees some apples, and he just, he's drooling over these things. And then all of a sudden, he starts crying. 
What, what's wrong, Gohan? Everyone's surrounding him. But he, this Gohan's a little liar and a fake. He, he's just a distraction so the other kids can steal food, like a lot of food. Yeah. It's not like each of them takes an apple. It's like they are opening the back of the crate and just pouring apples into a bag. They have a all crowbar. of the canned go. Yeah. They were ready for this. They have done this multiple times. And I just, Gohan, no, you innocent child. Now he's implicated. Now Gohan's got a rap sheet. Mm-hmm. Already at four years old. <laughs> I keep forgetting. He's only four. <laughs> they wouldn't. Or maybe they would. I don't know. As a shop owner, uh-huh. your apples are getting stolen. Yep. This is the, I'm assuming, not an everyday occurrence, but it happens often. Mm-hmm. What, are you trying to prosecute these kids? What are you doing? Real life me, not prosecuting the kids. If I owned a fruit cart stand and a bunch of kids bamboozled me out of some fruit, look, they got they got one over on me. They can have the fruit because they're kids and they need it. That's the cost of doing business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might get bamboozled here and there. You just write it off as a loss. And- but if I was a adult who had lost some family members in a tidal wave <laughs> and all I had left was the fruit to sell so I could rebuild my home. I'm sicking the cops on these kids like the adults did in this case. Yeah. This dog cop is so rad. He's oh, yeah. like, what? He's a floppy eared breed. He's a hound. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Of course. Of course. A blood hair. Uh huh. Gives chase <laughs> on a little hover bike. And it's a fun little chase, but I, I cannot believe. That we're using some sort of ET logic here, where somehow bicycles Bicy- with multiple people on them <laughs> yep. are faster than a hover bike. Yep. And it's not even like the strongest kids are pedaling the bike, right? If Gohan was pedaling the bike and Piccaro was maybe. pedaling the other bike, maybe. But it's just Rom and I don't know who, who else. Like, and they're not even juking the cop. It's not like they're going through back alleys or like hitting sick ramps. Mm-hmm. They're not grinding to get that secret tape. They're no, they're not Dave mirroring this bad boy. There, there's nothing too special about it, and, and sort of final thing that gets the cop. And I don't know why we needed this. Thank you. I'll proceed. The the cop is not distracted, but he does crash into a woman going down the street. And his bike rips the woman's dress apart, revealing her underwear as he crashes into a bunch of fruit. <laughs> like, what? What are we doing? <laughs> I, I really did. I was like, are we watching a Beverly Hills cop sequence? Like, that seems like something that would only happen to Axel Foley. <laughs> like, of course, Axel is driving a motorcycle, rides by a woman in a dress. It rips off and he crashes into a fruit stand and then... Lifts a watermelon off of half of his head and just goes, nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing after? <laughs> Maybe you need a banana and a tailpipe. <laughs> uh, I've never seen, I, I know Beverly Hills Cop, but I have yet to see. There we go. I now, here's that. my outrage. Yeah. Beverly Hills, Cop, about? Beverly Hills Cop 3 shows you the underbelly of Disney. You get to see underneath the rides in Disney Park, in Disney World. Really? Or Disneyland, I think. Yeah. That's surprising. It's really weird. Because you're like sitting there and you're like, is this really Disney? And then you realize, oh shit, it's Disneyland. <laughs> and they got they somehow got access. I mean, it's Eddie Murphy in arguably the height of his movie making career, right? Pre-Nutty Professor when it was just another just giant leap. Mm-hmm. Oh, those movies are fun. They're 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 really fun. Yeah, I'm very I'm very surprised that they allowed that to ha- that Disney allowed that to happen. Maybe they, you know. No one's doing it again, so... Yep. <laughs> Never again. They gave Murphy the keys. <laughs> hey, where's Pluto at? I don't know, Eddie. I just think it's great that you were able to <laughs> get us into, into you know, the underbelly of Disney late yeah. at night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want to see Space Mountain, but I want the lights off. Let me hit this switch flip. Oh! My eyes are adjusting. What do you see, Charlie? I, I mean, all I, I see... Uh, I see so many, so many mouse ears, so many mouse ears, so many hands. <laughs> Attached to skulls. Attached to skulls. Oh, Eddie, uh, Eddie, why did we do this, Eddie? This is this is a children's graveyard, Charlie. We got to get out of here. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why you're laughing. That's nervous. That's nervous laughter. I forgot you're my brother. 
<laughs> yeah, we, come on. We both na- we both laughed nervously, so here comes mine. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Eddie. Uh, I don't know. All right, we got to we got to get out of here. This is some sort of but, we know too much. But before we go, I got to tell you, I've been I've been working with somebody. His name's Dave Chappelle. Oh yeah, he pretty funny. He's hilarious. Not funnier than me. He's he's hilarious, Eddie. Is he funnier than me? I'm. I don't know. I can't tell you now, but I can tell you that I'm telling him all my true Hollywood stories. <laughs> well, I'll put him in. Uh, I got this new movie coming up. If we survive this. If we survive. Oh, I, I think I hear somebody coming. Right. Oh, I hope there's nobody down here or else I'd have to murder them. Oh, no, that sounds like that sounds like the big boss. Oh, look, that's right, Mick. If you had to see somebody down here, you and I would murder their bones. Oh, no, and his goon, Goofy. We got to get out of here. <laughs> oh, that Donald. Hey, man, what's going on? They got flair. <laughs> <laughs> and the Murphys went blasting off again. Yay! A callback to a, like two years ago. <laughs> and and see. see, we we did a whole bit about Kingdom Hearts. Uh huh. If you don't, I don't remember the number of that. But if you go to our website, we have that clip up in our clip section. Enjoy. Yes. So look, enough we, enough of this crime. Enough of this cops and robbers stuff, because we got to go to Snake Way <laughs> for five seconds. Goku's still there. All right, that's enough. Uh, yeah, as if as if we all forgot, but we'll move on. <laughs> After that day of thievery, Gohan, I'm assuming, I would, I, I wanted this to be Gohan racked with guilt over <laughs> stealing, is lying awake in, in the, uh, in the kid's compound, uh, and that, well, I think we know his true intention is to leave, to go home. That was his whole point. And on his way out, Piccaro up in the tree on night watch. <laughs> because we do learn, like you had mentioned, Eric, you're like, well, why don't they come at night? Because Piccaro, he's up all night. <laughs> Dude doesn't sleep. He is one keyed. Throw a nudie mag at him. <laughs> Strike, I don't like. <laughs> there, there's there no teen girls. <laughs> Ask him if he's got a girlfriend. He'll get embarrassed and walk away. <laughs> Worked on me when my parents' friends came over. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was a big one. Parents' friends being like, so do you have a girlfriend yet? No! Huh? <laughs> I'm running away to my room now. How dare you? They would just laugh and laugh. Uh, those, those motherfuckers. As you huffed your way up the stairs. <laughs> they knew what they were fucking doing unable to stop because carpeting was still in vogue <laughs> slamming doors and getting yelled out not to slam doors yelling sorry <laughs> next thing you know you're getting them water five minutes later well you don't you don't realize that they're staying for dinner <laughs> <laughs> then they ask the question again when you, when mm-hmm. you dig into those chicken tendies uh the plight of the children. <laughs> the plight of the children. I am so mad at friends of parents now. <laughs> because they're, you know, they know what they're, they're doing. They're bullying us. <laughs> they're bullying their friends' children. And I can't wait to do that. I know, I know. All, all. Whenever I have uh, children, they are going to be roasted relentlessly. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking giving them wedgies. I mean, you know the company that I keep. <laughs> Bunch of wannabe comedians that will love to take out their frustration on kids. Yeah, being the child of a comedian has got to be... I mean, it's got to be, one, isolating, and two, frustrating. Yeah. Just, uh, you're on pins and needles as a child. Can't express interest in anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Imagine being Kevin Hart's kid. Oh, ah, man. Ah, look at you. <laughs> Little ass. I don't know. Smaller than me. Get that new iPhone might be all right. <laughs> Being financially secure might be worth it. Yeah, for 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 literally ever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Piccaro, he's standing watch. Uh, Gohan's like, uh, look, uh, I'm not an orphan. I'm trying to get back home to Mount Pauzeru to Mount uh, P word. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, and here's on my end. Here's what makes me mad about Gohan. He says. He didn't say anything before because, quote, I just couldn't. Yep. 
They they kept that exact translation. So what you're telling me, Gohan, is that you're a fucking tourist. You're this rich kid slumming it with the pores because you think it'll be fun. It's like some break for you to like, oh, these the, the these unmentionable people, <laughs> folk. Oh, they have fun by running around? Hmm, how quaint. I am quite enjoying this. Oh, what, what a lark to steal. Ah, you don't have a mother. Interesting. <laughs> and you play in the dirt? How droll. <laughs> Exuberating. Oh, sharing a bed with... Two other children, that is where I must draw the line. This is this is the barbaricism. I must go now to my home. What happens if one of us wets the bed? Who do we blame? <laughs> what? Where is your maid to clean up my poop and pee? Hmm? I must defecate myself. No one to squeeze it out of me? <laughs> Nancy, Nancy. Nancy. Fuck Gohan. <laughs> Fuck this rich motherfucker. I did, I did want to go back to one thing about Piccaro. All right. Is that while he's on watch, he was having flat. He he says he's like, I remember the tidal wave like it was yesterday, and then he has a flashback. And then I had to ask myself, was the tidal wave yesterday? Because society is still picking up the pieces. None of the rubble has been cleaned up. There are boats on land. Is I mean, but people have already set up a market. Who's lying, Picaro or Rom? Because Rom's the one that says it was like two years ago. I, I think Rom's lying. Or he's a fucking child. <laughs> or he's four. The most notorious liars there are. You know what? Yeah, my parents' friends were right to fucking roast me. <laughs> you deserved it. I was Yeah, I was a little monster. You were probably telling them a story about something that never happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm sure I was like doing cartwheels and shit for just being a maniac. Saying, look at me. <laughs> they just wanted some time with my parents' Because they're adults who they never get to see. Because, mm-hmm. again, they're busy adults. Because your parents are too busy entertaining your ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I rescind my statement, friends and parents. You were, you're all justified. Now, now that we've got that out of the, out of the way. <laughs> like, yeah, was this, was this tidal wave like two years ago? If so, was it caused two years ago by any of the numerous explosions <laughs> That happened on islands out in the middle of sea. I'm talking it's, about the Tenkaichi tournament. I'm talking about all the Kamehameha waves that got yeah, thrown around the world. The, the like, moon getting blown up. Yeah, is whole... it was it the moon getting blown up two years ago? No, this was. I mean, that was more than two years. Oh yeah, ago. that was more than two years ago. That was like eight, yeah, eight ish, seven ish years ago. But I but mean, wait, no, Piccolo Piccolo blew it up months ago. <laughs> Oh, fuck, you're right. I think we could. Okay, okay. Wait, I, no, I think hey, you said it. You know what? In, in this cartoon, guess what, folks? I forgot that the moon got blown up a second time. <laughs> That's how much insanity has happened so far. The plight of the children, more like the plight of the moon. Plight of the moon, Jiminy Christmas. I would like to posit, though, that Piccolo blowing up the moon created a, a tidal wave <laughs> that wiped out this. That wiped out this town and also caused the tsunami that uh gohan was trapped in because of the unsteady seas yeah piccolo you need to stop thinking about conquering the world as you know like your old the way your old man did it through television broadcast and fear (laughs) just just cause a bunch of natural disasters to blow up the moon Uh uh-huh boil the ocean you could (laughs) he's got the power you don't need that shit yeah you don't need fish you got sunlight, baby. That's it. Mm-hmm. Photosynthesis. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta rethink how to be a supervillain. <laughs> so what it comes down to is P is like, look, I know where this mountain is. Tomorrow I drive you. You know what? Everyone can drive along with me. And then they start asking about Gohan's mom. Uh, they ask if she's nice. Gohan says, quote, I wouldn't say that. Every day she tells me to study, 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 and it gets annoying. Go on. You little piece That's of shit. That's awful. Because, and it's different from mine because they're like, oh, so what's your mom like? And Gohan's like, she's sweet. She's, you know. Wow. Yeah, she's like, she's sweet. She's a great cook. She makes me study sometimes, but all, like he's like very he measured and and, uh, and appropriate. He's like, but it's not all bad. He's like, I wish I could play some. I I wish I could play more, but it's okay. And I'm like, yeah, that's the right attitude, Gohan. 
American Gohan is best Gohan. Yeah, best son in the world. (laughs) Yeah, it was a weird, it was very odd. Yeah, and uh, I did find the kids discussing, like, the possibilities of a world of their own design. I found that conversation interesting because some of them were like, ah, we should go back to when there were farms and we didn't have to go to school. I heard kids could just work all day. Wouldn't that be fun? (laughs) I was like, what kind of kids are these that want to work on a farm? (laughs) Yeah, that is, I mean, they're they're pragmatic children. They want to contribute to society is all. So my kids, when they talk about school, they just sort of talk about it like, oh, I never got to go to school because of the incident. Um, and some people are like, oh, I love this subject or that subject. And then Pickerel's like, um, would you guys want to go to school? Because if you go to the Institute, you can go to school. And they're like, eh, no, nah, we don't want to do that. Which is ah. which leads more into what happens later on. Mm-hmm. Which again, is a whole, it's a whole fucking thing. Yep. So they need to drive to take Gohan home, but they need a car. So the next day, they're laying in wait for the Institute to come. They immediately start pelting them with rocks. Um, They try and hijack the van, but then the cops show up, baby. Oh, the cops show up. It's a a sting. sting. (laughs) I mean, to the point where, like, Bucky is just chuckling in the background when the cop shows up. He loves this. He's loving every minute of it. He's chock full of Krispy Kreme, and he (laughs) is ready to see some police brutality on children. And and he gets what he's asking for. Yeah. A little bit. Like, they're not, not, they're not hitting these kids, but they are, like, grabbing them and handcuffing them to the, like, Gohan seeing all this, all this carnage as kids are getting rounded up. Uh, and he steps in, he headbutts one of the guys, he, uh, like, tries to free Rom and Tico, and he notices that Piccaro is getting handcuffed by a police officer, so he takes his sword out, cuts the chain off, uh, and Pic- Piccaro and Go- Gohan managed to escape into a sports car that came out of nowhere. There is, so... This might be where things differ a bunch. Okay. Uh, so yeah, give me give me your scenario, and then I'll give you mine, and then we'll. I don't know what we'll do. Our heads will both explode. I think our heads might. I don't explode. know what's going to happen. Uh, so Piccaro and Gohan both escape, leaving the other kids crying out for for them, mm-hmm. crying out for Piccaro, screaming saying, his name. Piccaro, you're our hero, Piccaro, and he drives off with Gohan. We just see them bombing down the road. Piccaro pulls over to the side of the road, pulls Gohan out. Gohan is like almost crying, be like, Piccaro, why didn't you save them? You're you're their hero. Piccaro punches Gohan in the face. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he lands good. The thing we've all wanted to do. I said, yes. Um, and then with tears in his eyes, Piccaro is saying, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't take care of them. They need more than I can give them. Those kids need a real home. And then he says, "Uh, you're a rat. You're a bad dude for real. Keep it up. (laughs) Gets in the car, (laughs) gets in the car and drives off. He like, I think he says something about how there's a big world out there and he's got to explore it or something stupid. What the fuck? Yeah. But he says, you're a real bad dude. Keep it up. (laughs) That's, those two messages are... I know! It makes no sense! <laughs> well, okay, mine's mine's equally baffling. Because I don't know if you got this part. When Piccaro is uncuffed, and he's thinking, he's like, you don't quite know what's going through his head before he abandons the children. Right. Because he, like, he just hears their laughter. And like, oh, we love you! Like, he's just thinking about the good times he's had with these children. Which makes him, you know... Him and Gohan just leaving seem way more out of character. Yeah. Did you get that bit? I th- I think there was that bit, but I, I again I, it was hard. It was hard for me to tell. There, so many things were happening. Yeah, there's a lot of goodery happening. I, yeah, it could be missed. So I mean, same action, of course, different wording from Piccaro. After he beautifully decks Gohan, <laughs> punches him. After so he hard. punches a four year old, <laughs> this teenager punches. 
punch the four year old in the face <laughs> after driving, <laughs> dropping, dropping him off on the side of the road. <laughs> like after driving, I guess, in silence for yeah. like half an hour. Yeah, they, they, no words were said. <laughs> well, it's, it's a convertible. You can't really hear people. It's true. This is true. Uh, so after he decks him, he says, It's for the best. They're still just little kids. And already they're delinquents. They're too young for that. And that's when he starts crying? I mean, he's crying through the whole time, but like nothing about like, oh, they need a better home or anything like that. It's just, they're bad kids. Which is like weird because he's the enabler of the bunch. Look, they wouldn't start wearing headbands if you didn't start. (laughs) This is true. Avalanche looking son of a gun. (laughs) Piccolo needs you at the Mako reactor. (laughs) The earth is crying out. Can't you hear it? Piccaro, <laughs> so drop these kids and come do a bombing with us. Triple the pay. <laughs> Ooh, but, okay. But you better be nice to Marlene. And then as he drives off, he just says, respect your mom. Wait, for real? For real. For real, for real. Oh, Lord. Because Go- Gohan wasn't in mine. This is you true. A bad boy. This is true. In yours, Gohan was a, a bit of a prick. <laughs> I still believe he is, because after all that, he's like, well, not my fucking problem. Time to run home and joy. So I thought he was running back to the kids. <laughs> I did for a second. I'm like, oh, you go, honey, piece of shit. <laughs> and I, garbage person. And I want to just wrap up Picaro and the kids and the Institute, because are we supposed to put because the pieces? Because they don't. <laughs> because they don't. Are we supposed to put the pieces together? That Picaro was on the side of the, at least in mine, that Picaro was on the side of the Institute and finally realized that he could no longer take care of the kids. So he was uh, setting them all up to get captured. For a little bit. I was like, is is Picaro a mole? Did he narc out his children, friend, his child friends? Right. I And... I was half expecting him to be like, I had to, I had to give them a good home because I had to leave. <laughs> you know, like I had to go find my dad. I found out he didn't die in the tidal wave. He got swept like eight miles away and he, he reached out or something, something like that. It's weird. He's like, you kids go be at an orphanage, but not me. I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> I can go handle the real world. Yeah, I'm good. Again, like, I know this is all filler and we're waiting for the Saiyans or whatever. Uh, but just a little bit of a tie in to like their overarching story. Either like Picaro saying, like, I had to leave. I need to get stronger so I could be like the, the guy who say, who uh, won the World Martial Arts Tournament or something like that. And then Gohan could be like, Daddy? Or, or it's actually like, hey, I was Piccolo the whole time. Yeah, or is that? You didn't beat up any of those kids. What the hell? <laughs> I see you need more training. Yeah, it's is a lot of effort and a lot of story and a lot like a lot of dramatic work mm-hmm. for a filler episode. When you could have gotten away with like throwing something goofy at Goku again or I wouldn't mind a Gohan at sea. Yeah. Talking to his bucket. Yep, he he dressed a bucket like mom, like Chi Chi. <laughs> He he encounters some pirates. I don't know. Yeah. Like already that's better than this. Or you know what? It would have been perfect. Gohan's still at sea. He encounters like the last remaining uh, regiment of the Red Ribbon Army, that Commander Blue. Yeah. And that that cute, cute hippo. (laughs) He finds that island. And they're like, is that the kid from before? He has an aged day. Anyway, he's still a kid, right? We should take him. Yeah, clearly. Obviously, he hasn't grown stronger these past eight years. It, it, that, yeah. it could have been something like that. Yeah, already. I, all the like garbage stuff that we're suggesting <laughs> is better than what... I mean, interesting. No like, doubt. Interesting. It's a lot. Speaking of a lot, finally, uh, this handful of Gohan comes home. We get a peek inside the home. Chi-Chi is just stewing brooding no, yeah not the not not the food kind but the mad kind mm-hmm. that house is full of steam she's so angry. yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you hear you hear, hear a, a shift whistle in the background that's how <laughs> mad she is um she gets so mad that she this is a for real thing you get she gets so mad that she slaps a stack of books 
causing a photo of Goku and Gohan to float up that she catches in her teeth angrily. <laughs> She's training. <laughs> She's training to slap the shit out of Goku when he gets back. <laughs> Talk about bite the hand that feeds. Then something weird happens that I don't get. Gohan, about to enter the house, thinks about all the dumb kid friends he made along the way, gets a little teary-eyed, and then walks away into, like, a field, and, like, doesn't... I don't know why he did this. I, I, I think, at least with the ending that we got, at least that I got, I think he did this as, like, oh, wait, my kid friends, I can't go home and, like, relax. I got to train, even though multiple times he said, I'm just going to see my mom for a bit. Right. That was that was the whole thing for me. I was like, well, he's always said he's like, I just want to go home for like a, a yeah. bit. I just want like one meal. I haven't pooped in months. I've been holding it. <laughs> I need a toilet. The only toilet I know is home. <laughs> it, it didn't seem like the moral of the story with Pic- Piccaro and the kids led him to any new discovery about himself. Maybe he sees them and is like, well, I need to keep training or else I don't know what's going to happen. Right? Is it, is that what they're positing? Like he knows he has to train for them now? Are those friends that he made that he abandoned? That, that I think that's the closest we're going to get because he definitely wasn't running. It's not like, look, he runs into the Piccolo at the end. Mm-hmm. But it's not like he was running back towards the kids and then stops when he saw Piccolo. He just went into a field to cry. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, we're not going to figure this out, but I think that's the closest we're going to get to what any of this means. And just so we can wrap it all up, like you said, Piccolo appears. <laughs> oh, this is this is actually kind of badass. It, it's very badass because he, he, <laughs> he just says to Gohan, standing in this field of flowers, what is your mission? <laughs> <laughs> and go, I mean, Gohan responds like kind of tyranny. He's like, to defeat the Saiyans and save the Earth. Good. <laughs> Let's go back to the island. All right. Jack, we have to go back to the island. It's me, Hurley. <laughs> Another Lost. You watch, uh, you watch Lost, Gohan? Go, pretty good. Gohan, that's pretty good. 24, uh, 36, 18, 19, 28. <laughs> You, you can skip the last season, I think. But if you're a completionist. Yeah, like I am. While you've, while you've been dicking around with kids, I've been collecting orbs. <laughs> I had to listen to King Kai tell me how much I love orbs. Yeah, like, God, we get it. My final note in all caps is I don't understand this episode. And I think that's still my takeaway. Yes. I don't know why, and I kind of don't know how. Like, the only new information that we really get in this episode is that Chi-Chi's hella bored mm-hmm. and eating pictures, and Vegeta and Nappa are napping in their pods on their way to Earth. They're, they're hey guys, they're still on their way. Yeah. They're a little bit closer than last week's episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where will they be next week? Mm-hmm. A little bit closer. <laughs> Go to SaiyanTracker.net to see where they're at. And also to see if Santa Claus has visited your time zone yet. Thank you for making that reference because it was was coming from me whether you liked it or not. (laughs) But that's it. That's the end of the episode. We do get this weird, like, uh, I do like the transition of Piccolo up on that ledge, Gohan in the flowers, and then it fading out to them hovering outside of Earth's orbit. (laughs) Oh, wild stuff, wild stuff. But another episode in the books, Aaron. Another episode in the can. Another one in the books. Uh-huh. Speaking of books, we got some uh, some fan mail. Yeah, which we would call regular mail here, I guess. <laughs> Have we... I, that's the first time I've called it fan mail. That is the first time you've called it fan mail. Ugh, I don't like it. I know. I'm not, look, I, I mean, if I can be dumb for a second, I ain't got fans. I got family. <laughs> Never saw a Fast and the Furious movie, but I know that. I thought, I thought you were going to reference his, his newest hit film, Bloodshot. Bloodshot. I think it's uh, another one of his D&D characters. It is, it is actually based on a comic series, Vince. He did not create this character. Oh, okay. Just so you know. I will not have you... Besmirch? Yeah. We only besmirch when it's called for. 
Uh, he's just doing. He's hey man. He's like in his fifties. He's just he's just wants to work. He can't be Groot forever, apparently. <laughs> uh, well, he's only got. I mean, literally one more in him. Yeah. I think I said fan mail because the subject of the email is fan art, and this is from power listener Jeff, creator of the Almighty Kame House Party bingo card, which you can find at kamehouseparty.com. Mm-hmm. Play along. Play along. I'm sure somebody got bingo today for sure. Oh God, we yeah we run the gamut. <laughs> we we hit all the squares. <laughs> so Jeff writes. I want to share some illustration fan art I made that was inspired by the episodes you guys made in the second half of 2019. But first, I need to air some grievances. Oh, no. I love the name you came up with for the pod. It's awesome. I especially love hearing how you came up with it on the Almost Better Than Silence episode, which, again, we were a guest on the Almost Better Than Silence podcast. Go find it. A a lovely interview. It was great. Jeff continues. However, I have a real problem with your website address. It's super long and too hard to verbally communicate to others. Me. Listen to Kame House Party at KameHouseParty.com. Not me. That's Kami like Earth's Guardian, right? Me. No, it's Kami like Turtle. Not me. The three dots. It's a big mess. I wish you guys put more thought into picking a suitable domain name. Big oversight on your part. Oh, in, in, in a frowny face. Yeah, I know. We got a frowny emoji from we're this. Getting ro- we're getting roasted in our own mail. Uh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Sorry we thought our website should be the name of our podcast. And I assume some of this is sarcastic. But anyway, <laughs> it's, it's hard to read sarcasm from text. We like to get defensive every now and then. Mm-hmm. And we also know it's all with, with love. So it's, it's all fine. love, baby. Jeff continues. Anyway, I have more free time than usual. And I thought, it's a good time to bust out the Wacom and make some fan art to show my appreciation to Kame House Party for all the work they're doing during these times. So I made this. And Vince, I don't know if you've got. Oh, I've got it up. Okay, okay, you're see. Uh, we're gonna. I mean, we're gonna share it, but it's 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 a little Goku. It's a big Yajirobe. <laughs> Goku is saying yo. Yajirobe is saying beans. <laughs> uh. Jeff says, I use exactly zero undos, and I'm very proud of that, as am I. As am I. We all Revert. are. Yeah. However, it's not my best work, and I thought, it's a good time to bury the Wacom into some deep closet somewhere. I remember an episode where Vince talked about his enjoyment of Google Spreadsheets, and again, I thought, I'm much better at Google Spreadsheets than I am at Illustration. So I made you guys some Google Spreadsheet fan art. I hope you find it interesting. Thanks for keeping a smile on my face the last few weeks, Jeff. Uh, P.S. I tried my hand at Excel spreadsheets and it went just as bad as the illustrations. So I burned all the Excel install floppy disks and Control Alt deleted it out of my PC. Jeff is the king of the uh, of making us scroll all the way to the bottom for the very last yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, of, yeah, sure. last bit of his emails. And I, I, I do, I do appreciate that so much. And I appreciate this email. And I can't wait for everybody to see this amazing artwork mm-hmm. that you did for us, Jeff. Um, and thank you as always for all the effort you put into either sarcastically shaming us, literally shaming us, or just making us smile. Cause that's what it's all about. We really yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. We'll, we'll take it all. We'll take all everything. Yeah. But yes. Thank you so much for being a power listener and thank all of you for listening and participating in everything we do. This is uh, the show has always kept the same, but even more so it's keeping us sane. Mm-hmm. Now, now more than ever, and we appreciate everyone's everyone saying kind words, writing to us. Uh, just a like on a tweet or an mm-hmm. Instagram post is enough. If you want to write to us, you can do so by writing to KameHousePartyPod at gmail.com. You can talk to us on all the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, again, if you don't know, we've been doing some video game live streams uh, the past couple of weeks up on our YouTube channel. The people have spoken. We're going to do some Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh, yeah. So Thursday around 7.30 p.m. Eastern time is when we'll start. But again, that might change. So the best thing you can do if you want to know when we go live on YouTube is you got to subscribe and you got to smash that bell. I know that as soon as someone says that, everyone instinctually vomits. (laughs) Vince knows I was going to say it, so he muted it. And the person saying it just feels shame. Instead of vomiting. Exactly. Uh, but 
but you just got to do it, please. If you if you want to join us on live streams, that's the best thing you can do. Yep. And and also and on top of like watching it when we stream <laughs> or sharing it if you if you so see fit. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll definitely uh, make it our specific brand of Animal Crossing live stream. Uh, caveat: I've never played an Animal Crossing game before. This is be this will be yeah. We are starting. It's a fresh this game. Is fresh. Like the island is not even named yet. So yeah, come on. I mean, and you know, we're always open to suggestions. Come hang out Thursday. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. You can find all of our links at our far too long uh, URL, <laughs> Comedy House Party. K-A-M-E. K-A-M-E-H-O-U-S-E-P-A-R-T-Y dot com dot C-O-M. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. <laughs> now I know my ABCs. Come on, won't you say this with me, Aaron? Keep. Bye.